Hey, Michael. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Uh, good morning, Norm. I'm doing really great. Really great to see you. Listen, tell us a little bit about yourself and your companies, and then I want to, you know, get into this issue of smart cities and blockchain and how those go together. How you see that going together in the future? Sure. Thanks for having me again. It's a pleasure to be here. So our companies um, focus on two different areas, uh, but really the easiest way to think of us is think of us like a triangle. At the base of our companies is all about new technology. And we focus on two areas for new tech. One area is all about um, IoT smart systems and blockchain enhancement for security and safety of all the data that's created by those IoT systems. Uh, and that company is called Flash Labs. And then the other side of the triangle is all 3D construction printing, where we're printing buildings and different facilities faster, less expensively, et cetera, with cement. So we build the walls. And that company is called Black Buffalo 3D Corporation. All of our companies together, we report up to Hyundai. So we're part of the Hyundai group out of South uh, Korea. And specifically, our parent is called Hyundai BSNC, which stands for Business Solutions and Consulting. Listen, tell, tell me a little bit about um, their 3D business, because, uh, you know, that, that's always something that grabs people's attention. What, what does that look like and what's that going to look like? Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, that, that technology has really moved along over the last five, six years. And actually, our technology has been getting built uh, over the last decade. This was actually an acquisition for us um, about two and a half years ago of a company in South Korea that had developed this technology for quite some time. So Black Buffalo 3D Corporation, what we do is we provide the technology norm. So we're not the construction company. We're not a subcontractor to do the walls. We actually partner with the construction companies and the developers to help them to build the buildings that they are, whether it be residential, industrial, commercial, it doesn't matter. You know, we're building the walls outside, inside to help them build it faster, less expensively, and also most importantly, better, right? In terms of strength and, um, you know, stability of those walls. So we sell the printers. Um, we lease the printers to them. Um, all this technology, as I mentioned, was uh, created by our sister company called Hisys, H-I-S-Y-S, -S in South Korea. And really the person most responsible for all of this at our, our, our um, companies is our CEO and our good friend at Hisys, Dong Won Shin. He's really the, the, the genius, the Einstein here behind uh, everything. That's phenomenal. Listen, you know, you talk about printers. How big are these printers and what, yeah. and what do they do? And what do you see them doing in five years? Yeah, that's a good one. So we happen to be right now, we happen to be the tallest printer globally um, okay. currently. But as you know, most technology will be at one level, then somebody will pass us and somebody then we will pass them. So we just happen to be the largest now. So our printers go up um, to 40 um, feet high or four stories. Um, the overall industry globally, and there's quite a few players now, there's well over 12 players throughout the globe um, okay. that are doing what we're doing. And we want to see all of them be successful, right? Because the, the rising tide lifts all ships. But most of your industry right now is between one and two stories or 10 to 20 feet high, right? Okay. Our printers, we have two of them, uh, one that goes up um, two stories, one that goes up four stories high. And our printers are called the Next Generation Construction uh, Printers or Nexcon uh, Printers. So real simple, Nexcon 1 goes up two stories, Nexcon 2 goes up four stories um, okay. high. In terms of size, these are gantries. So ours actually unfold um, you know, wide, then they fold up with the gantry. It's really, really cool stuff when you, when you see it. The videos are spectacular. The videos yeah. are spectacular. Yeah, and then it goes right over the foundation. So it just rolls right over the foundation. Beside it, it has a silo with a pump that brings in all the cement. And the other side of it has the CAD system, which tells the, uh, you've already programmed in the mechanical design so it knows exactly where to print and what, what holes to leave for doors and windows and everything else. So, so this is a really, you know, I, I, it seems to me that your timing is spectacular. 
I mean, obviously, we're going through a technology change uh, in every aspect of the infrastructure industry. How'd you get here? I mean, what's your background? Yeah, uh, so I'm a uh, finance and tech person. Uh, so um, my uh, background is operating and building companies. Uh, okay. That's what I'm always hired for. I'm, I'm hired to fix things and to build things and to grow things. Um, so I'm the former CEO of Deutsche Bank's asset manager in the Americas, 400 and some billion uh, at that time in assets. Uh, most recently, I was the CEO and CEO of Rothschild uh, here in the, in the Americas as well, building out their institutional uh, business. So I've, I've researched, bought and sold many public and private companies. I've run different industry um, companies, both through our pi private and public investments. So really knowing how companies work, how they prosper, how their balance sheet functions, and, and even most importantly, how to build really successful teams around whatever the business value or product is. And, and that's, that's really where any CEO's success is going to be. It's, it's not about the product and the value. You got to have something to sell, obviously, uh, but it's much more about building really good teams. Well, you have, um, you have something really interesting to sell, so that's phenomenal as well. <laughs> yeah, we're lucky there. Yeah, no, there's a lot of sizzle there. Hey, listen, um, in, in terms of uh, are you focused just on the U.S.? Are you focused globally? How do you think about your marketplace? Yeah, um, we do have a direct U.S. focus, uh, both for uh, the 3D side and the smart city side uh, for Flash Labs. Uh, but we really are much more global. Uh, being part of the Hyundai Group, you know, we have so many global connect, uh, con connectivity to many different industries. Um, so where we're really focusing right now outside the U.S. is Central and South America, because there's so much need there for both technology and for really good homes. Right. Um, Europe as well, Africa and the Middle East. Uh, then of course our sister companies um, also focus throughout um, uh, Asia, most especially um, Southeast Asia. That's really um, encouraging to hear what you guys are doing and to, you know, you're essentially a, two startups uh, yeah. in a exciting space at the right time. Um, so one uh, last question and maybe a challenging one, but how do you see your business evolving over a 10 year time horizon? Because that's one of the things that the infrastructure folks are pretty good at is, yeah. is thinking in the long term. What, how do you see that, especially since you've got uh, dynamic technology businesses? Yeah, sure. So let's let's talk about that in two ways. Once about Flash Labs, and then uh, a little bit about Black Buffalo. So on the Flash uh, Lab side, you know everything there is all about IoT, um, yeah. and with us being the IoT, um, you know, smart solution specialist, we also supply the hardware right, from another sister company of ours called Harriot out of South Korea. But the need for data security and decreasing that unwanted access into networks, whether they be public networks or private networks, is more important than ever, right? Because the way we live and work has changed, right? Yeah. And it's changed in six months. Everyone is more virtual than they've ever been before COVID, right? Yeah. And also, our home and our work environments are really becoming one digitally, digitally connected platform, yeah. right? Yeah. And the openness of that network that we have that's connected at home and connected at work and everything overlaps the w as open as those are for people to access it for cyber hackers to access it i got to tell you norm it's frightening how open yeah. source these networks are so we focus on building blockchains in that iot system specifically to secure your network secure your digital home right and business and help people to continue to grow their digital footprint. So over the next 10 years, that's just going to become more and more important, you know, not just for what we do at home and work, but for your supply chain, your energy grid, right? Your smart city connectivity from building to building, from street corner to, to your car, right? To your phone, to everything. So that that is happening now, has accelerated, only continues to accelerate. Then with the 3D, yeah. yeah, with the 3D side, 
you know, that, that disruptive technology is so beneficial, right? Because over the next 10 years, what you're going to see, we're already decreasing the time by about half to build these buildings with 3D. You're decreasing the cost by 50 to 80%, depending on the raw materials, right? Um, you're also doing this sustainably because everything is recyclable. You build a cement house, and when you knock it down, you recycle all that cement, right? You're not putting up all of the um, all the molds and everything else, the, the wood, so you have such a much lower carbon footprint as well. So it's really good for society. And the main thing is we have throughout the globe such a need for affordable housing. There's such a shortage everywhere. You name a geography, you need affordable housing. Unfortunately, construction companies don't want to do that as much because they don't make as much money, right? So here, you not only are going to allow people to have a better home, a more affordable home, but I think over the next 10 years, take out the industrial and residential side, but think about precast, Norm, right? You have such a limit limitation of precast for bridges and infrastructure and underground and everything else for all these infrastructure projects that CGLA connects with. You can't get that precast to the work site because they're too big or they're too customized. With a 3D printing um, environment, you can print all that precast right on the job site and put it right in the ground right there. So you're really going to change a lot of infrastructure with 3D printing, not just buildings and a home. That's phenomenal. It's really interesting. You've got, um, I can think of about 10 people I work with who, who need to talk to you immediately. <laughs> Listen, thank, you. Mike, How are you doing? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Listen, it's, it's great talking to you. It's always super refreshing talking to you. I really enjoy it. And uh, wonderful what you're doing. Look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks so much, huh? Thank you. Thank you for having me. And we look forward to seeing you again. And keep up the great work you all are doing at CGLA. It's so important uh, for all the uh, the work that you do, not only for the projects, but also in D.C. Uh, with, um, you know, policymakers and getting them to understand how much we need better and more infrastructure. So thank you for what you do. Yeah, thanks. You, you give us the energy to make it happen. So we really appreciate it. Take care, Michael. Have a good day. Uh, you too. Thank you.